note by saying congratulations first off on the single over it I know you've been building up to this and now you have the music video you have a bunch of content that you've released what has that been like making it and now getting to have it out in the world so I've had this song a secret I've been keeping it a secret for the past five years so <laughs> so for me it's just like I'm so glad that she's finally out. She's one of my favorite songs I've ever written. Um, I wrote it with Noah, Alicia and Jordan Posterino. Noah and Alicia are two other artists. And the song, I, I feel like releasing it at this moment was right as well, because I feel like if I released it earlier, when I was with the person that I wrote it about, it would have been quite weird. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So now that I'm not with them, it's kind of like, oh, like a perfect whole, timing. <laughs> you know, I feel relieved. Um, and recording it from this very studio, from this mic, like in my home, um, was pretty fun as well because I played vocal producer and I worked virtually with my producer, uh, Lucas Marston. And yeah, it was a great time. Film filming all the content was amazing. There's even more content to come out because I actually have a music video, so that will probably be dropping this weekend or probably tomorrow or Sunday. I'm not sure yet. Um, so, yeah, it's been it's been a ride. Yeah. I mean, what's the difference for you as an artist having sat on this song for so long and now having it out as opposed to writing a song, producing it and then putting it out right away? I feel like the anticipation is it, it eats me away. I'm like, why am I holding on to this for so long? But being an indie artist that's self-managed, uh, I had to wait for like funding to be able to release this project. Cause otherwise like an artist will know this as well. Producers aren't cheap. And if you aren't signed, there's no label backing you and putting that funding into your project. So I feel like I would, I would be more excited if I like had written it and it was out immediately, but sadly that wasn't the case for me. So hopefully for like future stuff though. Yes. I mean, speaking of future stuff, you have your EP that's coming out soon ish. Uh, K yes. bye. What was the process for that? Like creative, but also how did it come about? How did the title come about? Could you talk more about it? Yeah, for sure. So K by came about, it was like one of my first, I think it was my third writing session in Toronto. And I wrote it with my guitarist, Alan Kulka, uh, Jarrell Young and Wakaz. And I remember going into the sec session. So I had a reference track and it was 7-Eleven by Beyonce. So we picked that BPM for the track. And I remember wanting to have a song titled Boy Bye because I normally go into sessions and have a title ready. At least I used to, not so much nowadays. Okay. Um, and then my guitarist was like, why don't we, why don't we change it to K Bye? And I was like, oh, I love that so much better because everybody says K Bye in a text. At least we used to. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, I think the communication is not as not as clear as, as it used to be. People Very are left true. hanging a lot. Very so true. <laughs> that was the first song I actually wrote out of the entire EP. And then all of the songs kind of came sporadically. Like I wrote Leave You To Get It and Killing Me in Sydney, Australia. So that's my Sydney crew, my my home, my homies. <laughs> <laughs> and we I wrote it uh, back to back days. I think it was like. I wrote Killing Me, which is the next song that's going to come out. And I'm so excited. It's okay. one of my favorites. Um, so I wrote Killing Me and then I think there was a two day gap or something. And then we wrote Leave You To Get It with a different um, crew. And then Cancelled was written prior to even all of those songs. And is there another one on it? No, that's it. That's all the songs. <laughs> so that's it was like... It. Yeah, over like 2019 to 2020 is when I wrote those songs. So it feels like literally a different time. And it was a different time in my yeah. life. Like I was in a, a pretty toxic relationship at the time. So all of these songs are kind of, you know, around that. 
Um, I'm in a much better place now, so that's great. <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of the process of, of everything. Did you, well, I feel like you did, but did you write songs that didn't make the cut and how many, if there were some? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I actually have enough songs for this to be an album and okay. I'm wanting to do like an extended edition to make it an album. I haven't recorded the final like product of those other songs yet, but there's probably like another six that okay. I was like battling between like, oh, does this make sense for like the storyline kind of thing? I also went off songs that I've sung live a lot and I picked those songs for the EP because I was like, well, I've sung them a lot. I know them really well, which is funny, but I think every artist can be like, it's hard like learning your song because you go through so many different points and lyrics in the writing process that you're like, you start singing lyrics that like were meant to be the lyric, but now they're not the lyric. <laughs> Whereas like learning a cover is so much easier because the songs, they stay the same. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot more songs and I love them all. Um, yeah, maybe we'll wait and see. I'm hoping that I, I can release the rest of them and add it on as like an additional, you know, little deluxe version. Um, but we'll have to wait and see because everything's in the unknown as an indie self-managed artist. <laughs> You're Fair just enough. hustling as much as you can constantly. Yeah. And I'm wondering for you personally, when you listen to an EP or an album, are you one of the people that's that hits shuffle or do you listen to it in order? I listened to it in order. I remember when Eternal Sunshine came out, I listened, well, that's a lie. Sorry, I lied. <laughs> I listened to We Can't Be Friends first. And, As most people did. <laughs> oh my God, it's so good. It's such a good song. I, and the video, are you kidding? I literally oh. get goosebumps every single time and start crying. I'm like, stop doing this to me, Ari, please. Also <laughs> want to be best friends with her one day. Um, the first time I listened to it, because there wasn't a video yet, I immediately, the, I love music for this reason, because people put themselves in the song as the main character and they feel what they want to feel with the song. It's not per se like what it's actually about. Because when I listened to We Can't Be Friends, I took it as like, I couldn't be friends with like a past self or like the person okay. that I was. Like we can't be friends anymore. Like I've like disconnected from that and I'm like a different person. That's how I took the song. And then I immediately was like, I don't think that's what it's about, but that's really cute that I thought that. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love the creativity yeah. that goes into music for things like that. What yeah. are you hoping that people take like as a whole from your EP? I really want people to listen to the EP well, when they do. If they do, oh my God, you don't have to listen to it, but you should. But you should. <laughs> <laughs> and when you do, I really hope the takeaway is like, I feel really great after listening to this EP. I don't want to let any fucking person, sorry, am I allowed to swear? You go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna let any fucking person dim my light. I am a boss ass bitch and I am a queen and I'm not gonna let anybody walk all over me ever again. That's what I want people to take away. The journey of the EP is like, I'm in this toxic relationship. Um, I'm finally getting attention from this person which is very strange because I've never really had that before. So now I'm quite confused. I'm now staying in this relationship, even though I'm very confused and it's killing me, but I don't mind because it's all that I'm used to. And I'm just going to stay in this toxic, vicious cycle. And then I'm over it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm I've had enough. Subtle little plugs there. <laughs> I'm over it. I've had enough. I'm going out with my girls and I'm getting drunk. I literally love that line. It's just, it's so good. And then now I'm not with you. I feel good. Okay, bye. And now I'm like, I'm dancing by myself and having the best time of my life. And I can't believe it took this long. So that's kind of the plot. She's a little story writer. <laughs> but 
taking a little break from what you have going on now, I have to bring up the reel that I saw you post the other day about your time on X Factor, because you have no idea how long it took me to put two and two together, where I was like, I used to watch your videos obsessively. And then you posted that and I was like, oh my God, this is the same person. <laughs> oh my God, that is so funny. I'm so like, glad. <laughs> you have just changed for the better. You've changed so much and you've grown so much that it's different from your X Factor days to where you are now. How have you seen yourself grow as both a person and an artist? Oh man, I feel like since X Factor, that little girl... I don't want to say little girl, teen girl. I was like 19. <laughs> For the very first audition, it was like 10 years ago. So I was 19 years old, which is like wild to look back on. I feel like I was so nervous going on that stage for the very first time. And I don't get as nervous now when I go on stage. I literally, it was the moment after that audition that I was like, okay, this is what I have to do. I like I need to be performing. I need to be singing on stage. This is something that I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, but skipping to 2019, when we actually got on the live shows with Mel B, we learned and I learned so much about the industry and like the ins and outs of like filming, like we were having interviews constantly. And I think that taught me a lot about the industry as well. Since then, though, I feel like I used to take on a lot of um, a lot of criticism that people would say to me pretty literally. Whereas now when I do see people comment horrible things, I'm like, well, I just laugh <laughs> like, Fair what enough. are you going to like, you know, who are you? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's not it's not going to affect me. Like, yeah. You don't know me personally. You don't know my stories. You don't know Brooke Stiller. It's it's free views for you. You know, yeah, exactly. That's the way you have to take it. Yeah. Um, but since then, I think all the relationships that I've gone through and all the people that I've met along the way have really made me the person that I am. And moving from Australia to Toronto, it's like opening a Pandora, Pandora's box. It's like once you kind of know what's out there, like how can you go back? And Australia is such a beautiful country, but I'm also like there is there is so much more out here in North America for music that there's no way, well, not right now that I feel like I can go back and settle there, you know? Yeah. So I feel like I've grown so much as a person and I look back on X Factor and I'm like, what a wild time. One of the best moments of my life and always will be. And I get to show my kids that one day. <laughs> That's so iconic of you. <laughs> right. And be like, oh my God, this is mom on TV with the girls. No, um, no hate, no hate, no shades to the girls. But do you prefer being a solo artist as opposed to being in a group? Oh, I, I loved being in the group. I really did. I miss looking to my left and my right and seeing them beside me. That's the thing that I miss the most. But we fought, and I haven't said this on any podcast or anything ever, a lot. I like, feel like groups have to fight. Yes, but we also didn't have management. We didn't have any, but it True. was us. So it was like three girls beating heads on like, I want this, you want this, you want this. How are we going to make it work? I feel like a lot of the time in the group, like we kind of had our roles as mm -hmm. well. I always did things very fairly and for the group. I never like intended to put myself forefront if that's how it ever seemed, but I would always like vocal arrange things. So normally I would start a song because I had like a, a raspy, like huskier voice. Then Alicia would normally sing second verse and then belt in the bridge because I would vocally arrange and change second verse to like kind of go to where her voice could go to. And then Taylor would normally do the bridge, which was normally a rap. Or if we couldn't do a bridge, we would do a rap for second verse and would kind of arrange it like that. Um, so I really do miss performing with them. And like we've been chatting recently, 
but I also am like really pursuing being a solo artist. And I think the only thing I really do miss about the group is just being on stage with people. So like when I have my band, I'm like, oh, this feels really good. So maybe it's not really missing the group, but per se like missing just having people on stage with me. Mm -hmm. So being a solo artist is, is a lot more lonely. <laughs> And it's great when you have artist friends because you can chat to them about things as well and help each other along the way. Um, but I, I do miss the group too. Yeah. And I love how you said your first performance on The X Factor was when you really knew you wanted to get into this. Before that, how did you know you wanted to get into music? Was there like a specific moment that you remember being like, I need to at least try this? Yeah, there was a specific moment. I was actually at full-time dance at 85 International in Sydney, and I was wanting to pursue musical theatre. So I was a musical theatre kid growing up. I went to the McDonald College Performing Arts School, which is like a pretty prestige, um, like performing arts private college in Sydney. And I did musical theatre there and music. I picked up the guitar for the first time and I actually bunged my head so maybe this is why this concussion has been really bad because it's not <laughs> the first first time I've hit my head um and I loved musical theater I still do I still want to do a musical one day um but when I was at full time at 85 I was getting like bullied pretty badly by the girls that I got bullied from in high school so they also went to the same full-time dance and I was like you've got to be fucking kidding me like I'm gonna go through this all over again and I ended up leaving after term one because I was like, I can't deal with the bullying and it sucks that I'm letting these girls get the better of me, but I think I want to pursue like just singing and performing and doing something that I've created rather than somebody else has created like a musical. Mm -hmm. Like I want to create my own musical one day. <laughs> I don't want to be in somebody's musical. I want to be like the writer of a musical and like write the music and maybe perform too. But that was the moment that I was like, I think I want to do music and then beats kind of started. And then I think it was the year after, I think it was the year, yeah, two years after we went on X Factor and like X Factor came as a surprise. Like we kind of put ourselves together prior to going to this, um, it was called JMA. It was like a boot camp for like artist development. And then we got put together. There was actually a fourth member of Beats. Drama. And then she, she, and, she was the blue beat. We were like the girl wiggles, you know? I love that. But like more funky. And then she ended up leaving because she was like, I want to be a solo artist. So we were like, okay, off you go. And then when, okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> and then when X Factor were like, we're obsessed with beats, she was like, I really wish we were doing this together. And we were like, oh, well, you're lost. Like There's no other way you're coming back in now. We're known as these three girls. Like, that's it. Yeah. Um, so once we kind of went to the artist development boot camp, it was the excitement was so real that we were like, oh, my God, we're going to do this. Like. This is so fun doing it together. So that was that was another moment, but specifically like being at full time dance that I was like, I don't think I want to deal with this shit. <laughs> I think I want to I want to be doing music on stage. And I've always my mom's always classified me as like a singer. She's like, Brooke's my singer, Taylor's my dancer. Even though <laughs> we both do both, like Taylor's an incredible singer, and I'm an incredible dancer. Um, so I mean, childhood trauma. <laughs> don't we all have it? <laughs> For real. <laughs> but anyway. I feel like a big part of the entertainment industry is manifestation and having goals. So if you had to manifest anything for your future career, what would it be? Oh my God, I have. I, do you want to see my vision board? I would love to. <laughs> I made this at the beginning of the year. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, you probably won't be able to see it. Wait, let me. How do I turn this off? Anyway, on here I have. Oh, that you can kind of see a hundred thousand subscribers, CBC, BBC. So I would love to get radio play for sure. Um, I've been kind of manifesting that and I've just been chatting with someone at BBC 
So we'll see. Maybe. I think it's more all these people in the industry want to see that the artist is like hustling and then they kind of take you seriously too. You can't be like, oh, I released something and then I'm really inactive. One thing I've really manifested, I think just like this EP, honestly, like I got funding by Factor, which was huge. And I submitted at the very last minute, like I'm talking like 30 minutes before deadline. And I was like, okay. And I was like, we'll see. And then I put on a show for my birthday and a few people came, but not many. And I was like, okay, kind of pretty bummed because not many people came. But I, I put on that show because I wanted to do something that I loved, which was mm-hmm. sing on stage. And I sang my whole catalog, not even all of my catalog, but most of my catalog. So I sang like about two hours of like songs that I have that are all originals. I didn't sing one cover. Wow. And and I did that show because I also wanted to make some money to release the next song. And I didn't make enough because I paid the band and I paid the venue. I paid the artist that sang before me. So I was kind of left with maybe like $200 at the end of it, not even. And I was like, this is not enough to release a song. And then I went to Long and McQuaid the next day to return something. And then I got an email when I was in Long and McQuaid saying that like the offer, like granting had been accepted. And I was like, oh my fucking God, I'm going to release my first EP. Like, this is wild. I didn't like, I forgot about it. So I feel like manifestation is is such a huge part of life. Like I manifested that, like I manifested my partner. I manifested being in North America because I wanted to as a young girl. Like I didn't know, well, LA, ideally, that's the goal. And I'm manifesting, ma- manifesting it as hard as I can. Um, but I think as, a, as an artist, the biggest thing that I would love to do is be in LA writing for other people and myself with very established artists and go on a huge tour, whether that's supporting someone first because baby steps yeah, and then, and then doing my own tour one day. But I definitely see Brooke Stiller being a name to remember. And I say that in the most like, humbling way like I'm not saying it you know just like the hard work I really hope it pays off yeah definitely so, yeah there's, there's a couple things that I manifested and am manifesting yeah we'll see what happens but I have a good feeling and good vibes sending your way so thanks Gracie <laughs> but my last question for you if you just dis- had to describe what's coming up for you next in three words what would they be album a move okay like physically moving (laughs) um and I think health okay just like completely healed I think that's that's a really big forefront right now for me Mm -hmm. to in order for me to do everything else that I want to do yeah because been doing like doing this project with all of the healing and rehab I've been trying to do, it's been really hard. Like I should have slowed down a lot more than I did. And this was the only chance that I had to do this EP. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm just going to have to put on my big girl pants and figure it out. Even though I'm like struggling to like stand or I have a constant pressure headache, but it's been a, it's, it's rewarding knowing that I went through this whole, whole process with feeling what I was feeling and still am, but very mildly now. Like it's not as intense. But yeah, they're the three things I would say. Album, move and healing. I love that. Well, I can't wait to see what's next for you and congratulations on everything again. Thank you so much, Gracie. So nice to t- chat to you today. Mm-hmm.